Shanti, Ekaroma, Ekarosa, to all the hope, President of uh, Rotary Club of Lagos, Palm Grove Estate, and all hope presidents of other clubs, assistant governors and past assistant governor, past presidents and dear fellow hope Rotarians and Rotary family and friends to all the hope lovers and hope practitioners. All protocols duly observed. <clears throat> Today, it's a wonderful opportunity to all of us to listen to the divine voice of Sister Brahma Kumari Pratiba. Sister Pratiba. Is born in Kave, Zambia. Being a Zambian, she can speak Gujarati. Hindi and English. Hindu by birth, but she follows the universal code of spirituality. <clears throat> she is the regional representative of the Brahma Kumaris World Spiritual University Assistant. to the Economic and Social Commission of for Africa. And she is the permanent representative of the Brahma Kumaris World Spiritual University to United Nations Environment Program. And she's also Assistant Regional Director, BK, that is Brahma Kumari's World Spiritual University centers all over Africa. She is a teacher of spiritual education for the upliftment of humanity. She's a most sought out speaker who has interest in all the classical performance, whether it is visual, whether it is dance, music, and she's always open to learning about different cultures, meeting people, bringing benefit to many people from all walks of life. She has participated in many activities in bringing benefit to many souls. Sister Pratiba has been a student of Brahma Kumari's World Spiritual University since 1974. I just took birth in India. <laughs> <laughs> she devoted her life entirely to spiritual service in 1977. After 18 months training in India, she returned to Africa where she travels widely lecturing and presenting seminars on personal development, stress management, positive thinking, etc., etc. She was instrumental in setting up and running the Global Spiritual Lighthouse, an inner space planetarium in Mombasa, Kenya, and this was a small-scale planetarium of its kind in East Africa. Her active interest in imparting spiritual knowledge brought her to Addis Ababa in 1995. I'm sure you all might have known this is Ethiopia. This re resulted in a new Brahma Kumari Center being opened in Addis Ababa. In 1996, December, she was instrumental in opening a BK Center in Abidjan, Ivory Coast. She has represented... Brahma Kumari's World Spiritual University at a number of conferences in Nairobi, Kenya, including the Origin of Peace Conference, the Third Woman's Decade Conference, and the Eucharist Conference. Now, there is a huge list, and I'm going to finish it very quickly. And because if you listen to this, you'll really feel the essence of her efforts in Africa and uplifting the Africans quality of lifestyle. In 1986 March, she played a major role in the Africa Peace Tour organized by Brahma Kumaris and the tour involved visiting 17 countries in Africa by a minibus by road traveling, sharing spiritual knowledge with the people of those countries. 
1988 as African representative of Brahma Kumaris World Spiritual University for the United Nations Peace Initiative, Global Cooperation for a Better World. She attended a meeting with the Secretary General of the United Nations. Paradicula for the Peace Award presentation, United Nations Building, New York, USA. In 1993, she was part of the workshop on environment, development, and spirituality, which is organized by UNCED and BKWSU. 1995, she participated in the fourth women's conference in Beijing in China. Represented Brahma Kumaris at the United Nations Conference Habitat II, Istanbul, Turkey in 1996. She was instrumental in organizing the Festival of Soul Conference in Harare, Zimbabwe in 1999. The journey is constant and continuous. In 1999, she was invited to speak on stress-free living at the World Bank in Washington, D.C. in USA. She lectured on value-based education at the symposium on values organized by five major universities in the city of Merida, Yucatan City State, Mexico in 1999. She presented at the Forum of the Americas, um, Taxala, Mexico in 1999. In 2001, she participated in the third UNTARD, UNLDC, that is United Nations Least Development Countries Conference, Brussels, Belgium, in 2001 on the lecture, on a lecture tour of Australia, Fiji, New Zealand. In 2001, she participated at the World Conference Against Racism, Racial Discrimination, Xenophobia, and Related Intolerance in Durban, South Africa. In 2001, September, she facilitated URI, that is United Religion Initiative, a regional assembly in Nairobi, Kenya. In November 2002, she presented at the COMISA, that is Common Market of Eastern and Southern Africa, 14th meeting of Council of Ministers, harnessing the power of change in Lusaka, Zambia. In 2004, instrument, she was an instrument in piloting South Africa project in Mozambique, and the official opening was done in the partnership with UNESCO at the Polana Hotel in Maputo. In 2005 March, started activities in Luanda, Angola. In June 2010, representative of the BK as she has, as a representative of the BKWSU to the United Nations Climate Change Frame Convention, happened in Bonn, Germany. November 2011, participated at the United Nations Climate Change Conference. Durban, South Africa. Continuously, she participated in United Nations Environment Assembly 1, 2, 3, that is 2014, 2016, and 2017. And the journey goes on and on till date in 2024. Uh, in Africa, Brahma Kumaris is celebrating 50 years of spiritual services and over 80 centers in different countries of the wonderful divine land of Africa. Uh, she is born African, and but she's serving all the cultures, all the beings, understanding their pulse, their need, and the call of time. And we would have a great opportunity to listen to her on this wonderful topic, peace building and conflict resolution. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you, and good afternoon from India. Greetings of peace to my brothers and sisters back home in Africa. When people see me, they assume my nationality being Indian. And so one time we were enjoying the Victoria Falls in Zimbabwe and an American gentleman, very elderly, asked me a question. Do you have such a beautiful place in your country? And I said, yes. 
He says, are you sure? I said, yes. He says, I've been to Victoria Falls six times. And I said, maybe I have been there more than uh, 30 times or 40 times. And he was just looking, thinking, oh my God, this lady is just not believing. Then he said, are you sure you've been to the Victoria Falls so many times? And I said, yes. This is, where are you from? I said, from here, from Zambia in Zimbabwe. And then he could believe. But looking at the uniform, looking at the skin, they would think I'm from India. Similarly, I would say I was born in Zambia, brought up in Zimbabwe, and living in Kenya for 46 years. Who am I? I think I'm more African than all of you. That is assumption. And we human beings live in assumptions. Today's topic is very interesting. Building peace and sorting out conflict. In other words, sorting out conflict and that's the resolution we're taking. Building is a very common word which we use nearly every day and every time. Peace is another common word in today's age and time that every human being would talk about peace. Not because they have peace, but because they need. And we all need. But resolution, what does that mean? It actually means determination. And action. Whatever I make resolution of, I have to act towards it. That's action. And so we're talking about peace building. And that's the resolution we're taking. And I need to promise with my own self how would I take action to bring peace in this world? Leave alone the world, leave alone the community. Let me first start with the self. So I make a resolution that I start that peace from myself. And so we define peace as not outward, but inward. It's not an English lesson we are taking, but I would just tell you that in English we have two words, very common or very similar. Silence and peace. Silence is environment. Silence is extra word. Whereas peace is introvert, and peace is a state of mind. So it is not necessary that I go away on the beach or in the forest or on, up in the mountain or isolation that I would become peaceful. I can create an environment which is silent, but that's limited. And so what do we human beings really need? We actually need peace. And even in peace, I want internal peace, peace of mind.
Sorry about the technology. We are up in the mountain. And so I was asked to fight. And I said, why do I need to fight? So they explained to me that, um, you know, the judges gave you number one speaker. And they're supposed to give you the trophy, but that trophy is floating trophy, so they would not um, give you that trophy. And we are fighting for that, that the trophy has to go to you, because they never mentioned that it was, uh, you know, a floating trophy. I just smiled. There was so much noise and fear in the room. Peace was completely gone. And I just went to the organizers and I said, look, this is what is happening. Can you please give me only five extra minutes? And they were very happy. I said, I'll solve the problem. And I just went on the stage and I first requested all of them to just be silent because they were all making a lot of noise for that trophy. And I said, everybody feels that the Brahma Kumari should receive the trophy. I have not come here for the trophy, but I came here because I liked the topic. Is religion the way to world peace? We all talked about world peace for hours and hours. And now we're trying to create peacelessness and scare the organizers and fight for a small trophy. But for me, the best trophy would be if we leave this place peacefully. That is my last resolution. And so we need to act towards it. We don't need to just talk about it, but we need to act. And everybody was so quiet, silent, and peaceful. And the organizers were just so happy because the youth wanted to throw eggs and tomatoes and all that to the organizers. You could imagine what would happen then. But instead, everybody supported and left peacefully from that place. What am I trying to say? Peace does not uh, begin out there. Peace begins within me. And it is a state of mind. Do I need to lose my peace just for a small little trophy? Or do I need to create that peace in my fellow human beings? And so, peace is of a religion, really. Wherever we come from, whoever we are, whatever the faith is, it is given to us in this world. So I was just sharing with all of you regarding uh, the true identity. What is my true identity? I am not this physical body of chemicals and particles. I am just a spiritual being. And the true religion of the spiritual being is peace. The other faith and religions like Christianity, Hinduism, Buddhism, has just come in this world with this body. But originally, I am just a peaceful soul. And so when you hear the word Om Shanti, it simply means I am a peaceful being. You are a peaceful being. And so it's not just a greeting, but it's actually 
a state of mind which we remind one another that we are peaceful. And when we are peaceful, we create those peaceful actions in our day-to-day -day life. And so that is the resolution as human beings that I need to take to build a world full of peace. Peace begins in my mind. It then comes in my words and action and lifestyle. What is it that takes my peace away in the mind that is thoughts? I have different qualities of thoughts. Positive thoughts, negative thoughts, necessary thoughts, unnecessary thoughts. And so I filter. That's where meditation helps me to filter my thoughts. Because if any quality of thoughts just goes through, then any quality of action comes through. And so what I need is, I need to filter it. We are in a world where, of course, unnecessary thoughts keep on coming. And maybe even negative thoughts keep on coming. But what I need is to filter them, not allow them to go through. So... Meditation is a tool. In the early days, we would say it was just a fashion. But now it is a necessity. The world is going through such a turmoil that if I do not learn how to meditate, I will not learn how to filter my thoughts. And so meditation helps me to first filter the thoughts, create space, and then nurture the thoughts. So it is said, thoughts create attitude. Attitude creates language. Language creates action, and action creates lifestyle. So where do I sort it out? We human beings are trying to sort it out out there in relationship with people, with task, and extrovertness. But really, I have to step within connect with my inner self and create such thoughts which will help me in the process. And it's meditation is a filter. Necessary thoughts, positive thoughts, powerful thoughts will go through in your life. But unnecessary thoughts, negative thoughts and weak thoughts will get filtered. It will not go through. So your attitude will transform from negative to positive. Your language will transform from weak to powerful. And of course, it will then reflect your lifestyle. I remember just uh, last year or two years ago, after COVID, we were traveling me and my mother, we were going back from Mount Abu to Nairobi and it was early morning. So we were at the airport by 2.30 in the morning and we were sitting there waiting for the flight, but not just sitting. Just sitting, waiting 
can create such thoughts which brings anxiety and stress. But we were sitting and meditating at the airport because it was our early morning meditation at four o'clock. So we just finished and they started boarding us. We walked in the aircraft and the stewardess greeted us. Good morning. And we just silently, quietly said good morning. And we took our seats. We were still in that mode of silence. And uh, of course, the stewardess was very busy in the morning. But as soon as she finished her duty at that point, but whatever she was doing, she kept on looking at us. I also felt like, you know, she wants to know who we are. But she came and she asked me, can I ask you a personal question? I said, sure. She says, what are you and who are you? So I started telling who the Brahma Kumaris are and what we do and how it helps us in our life. She could not believe it. She said, when you walked in the aircraft, both of you, I could feel the vibrations were so powerful and so peaceful. So peace doesn't just come alone. Peace brings power also. And that power is not that uh, extrovert power, but it's the internal power, which helps me to recharge. And once I am recharged, I can help others to be recharged also. And uh, she says, I could feel it so much. So many passengers came through, but you two were the ones who just created a different atmosphere in the flight. And I told what it is and how it works. So peace is like a perfume. Once you wear the perfume, you don't go everywhere telling people I've, I've been wearing this perfume. People will smell it. And in fact, some who are very, you know, used to perfumes will also know which one it is. So similarly, when I am peaceful and I go wherever I am, people will feel maybe not the peace, but the vibrations. And that vibrations would give them peace, but also power. When you have these two treasures in life, peace and power, you will definitely be very happy. And so happiness follows. It's like a shadow. But I want to clarify, there are so many different types of powers in the world. One is the power of wealth, power of beauty, the body, power which is political influence, power of knowledge. But this one is the power we generate from our inner self. The moment I make a resolution or I act, when I act and I become peaceful, I will then share that power with others. And it's divine power. It is not worldly power or extrovert power. The worldly power, when you have influence, you share that power. When you have beauty, you share it. But the moment things change, your power is gone. When you have wealth, you have power. Your wealth is gone. So it's all very limited. But this power is unlimited. And I can recharge it regularly. One time someone asked me, when you talk and share, do you not get drained out? No, we do not get drained out. Because what we are sharing and what we are talking, it's not ours. Remember I shared with you about that 
competition on peace. It wasn't my uh, knowledge. It was my experience. And so I don't have to put an experience on a piece of paper. I can just share it by heart. And so whatever I experience, I can share with others with that confidence. And so spiritual journey is such that first it connects me with myself. Then I connect with the powerhouse that is, um, you know, every faith believes in different names and identity, but we know it's the powerhouse. Somebody calls it God or whatever they want to. So I connect with the powerhouse, the treasure store, and I fill myself up, I recharge myself, and then go out there and use it. And so the more I use, the more I can recharge. The more I use, I recharge. And that is building peace. Building peace is not something like building a house. But once you have your house, I create that vibrations in that house. Similarly, planet Earth is our home. And in that home, I create those vibrations of peace. And we would have a beautiful place to live in. A beautiful world with this harmony, peace, and love. And so that is building peace. Peace is not something which you can build with stones and clay and you know, doors and windows, peace is a state of mind. If you can all sit up straight and just very softly step within yourself and look for a quiet space. within yourself and just be silent. Connect with that silence. Feel the silence. Listen to the silence. And it's so rejuvenating with that silent state of mind. I go upwards and I sit in my center of the forehead, which is where. I situate in the body, the third eye of wisdom, or the mind, mind's eye. And I do not see the world with these two gross eyes, but I see beautiful, peaceful world with my mind's eye. Visualize, see what you would like to see in your fellow human beings. A peaceful, harmonious world. Not only human being to human being, but harmony with human being. Harmony with plants and vegetation animals, elements, everything what exists on this planet Earth. 
It is our home. And let us build it. And time and again, I recharge. It is very simple to recharge. When I start my day, I start with a few moments of silence. In between, wherever I'm waiting, I just go into that silence. When I need to make any decisions, I go into that silence. Just a few seconds. And I end my day with that silence. I accumulate that silence, that practice, which then helps me to filter my thoughts, which is simply meditation. And once I filter my thoughts, I allow the most powerful thoughts within me, which turns into my life. So my life would be peaceful, powerful, and positive. Let us go back to that world and share this state of mind with others. Thank you. Should I open up for questions? Yes. If there is any, a few questions I would take in. I would like to thank you so much. Somebody says it's awesome and somebody says something, but it will only become what you really want is through our practice. Please, just take this little inspiration from today's program and all the best to all my Rotarian brothers and sisters. Thank you. Om Shanti. As your audio is not reachable, and it is not clearly audible. If you, if there are questions, you may please type it in the chat box. Box. Uh, can you can you hear, sister? Now. Yeah. Yes. Now it is better. Thank you so much, sister Pratibha. They were saying, they were saying uh, for such an insightful uh, presentation and thought-provoking uh, information. Uh, as you rightly said, that the peace is nothing material or physical. It's a state of mind. And once we start practicing, all of us, each and every individual all around the world, we can have peace, inner peace in our homes, in our society, in our country, and all around the world. So thank you very much once again. Now I would like to uh, invite uh, a few questions uh, to Sister Pratibha. If anyone has got, they can raise their hand. And uh, those who are present physically come to my place here where I am standing because we have some audio issues which we, we are trying to resolve. But in the meantime, they can come and ask a question from this place. And anyone uh, online, please raise your hand. And over here, who exists? Can you hear Sister Pradeva? No, question? no, no. But we can hear you. Uh, 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 our, uh, you know, mentor and um, uh, senior Rotarian and our past president, uh, 
Mr. Tarun Tar Sangvi is asking, can peace and poverty coexist? Peace and po poverty? No. The moment I become peaceful, poverty goes away because it's a treasure. Human beings have lost even the wealth because they've lost the happiness. They've lost the peace. The moment you are truly peaceful, wealth follows you straight away. Okay. Uh, thank you, sister. Uh, uh, and Tarun, I hope it... Uh, and uh, we have a question from uh, uh, Rotarian Gift. Uh, she is asking, how do we blank our minds from the environmental noise? Yeah. Did you hear me? Sorry. Did you hear me saying that when you meditate, you blanken your mind? No. Mind is to think. It will never become blank. But at least I can divert it from noise to silence, just silence. And silence will give you such strength. In other words, I do not have chatter of the mind. You know that noise in the mind, that should not be there. But if you have soothing thoughts, they are very energizing. They're very healthy. So in our meditation lesson, we never ask our students to blanken the mind. Even after giving you a talk, I say, all right, now sit down and we'll meditate and please stop thinking. The last thought in your mind would be, sister told me I should not think. That's also a thought. So mind is to think, eyes is to see. In other words, whatever organs or whatever uh, you know, power I've been given, I must use it. But some places I see something and I don't even see it. In other words, I just ignore or neglect it because it's not my business. Similarly, when I think, I will only think what I need, what is necessary for me for a healthy lifestyle. Others, I would not allow thoughts to come. So please don't wait and don't make efforts to blanken your mind up. It's like, you know, a little baby is very naughty. You don't tie that baby up in a little corner and leave the baby there. But you discipline the baby, train the baby and say, you know, don't climb here, don't make noise, just sit here, do this, do that. In fact, children don't even like when you tell them what not to do. But tell them what to do and they would love it. Similarly, our mind is like a little baby. Don't tell your mind not to do, but tell your mind what to do. And you will see wonders happening. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Sister Pratibha. Any more questions we have from the audience here? Yes, sir, please. Uh, Rotarian Ramesh Vishwal. Om Shanti. My question is on Om Shanti only. Being an Indian, anybody dies, we say Om Shanti. And also I can see in Brahma Kumari also, it is said Om Shanti. So just I wanted to get more entitlement from you, how it is in the different occasions we say Om Shanti. That is the one as Om Shanti. But for uh, your presentation, it was very nice. And I could understand some of the things, but not all. When you have said thought, then attitude, then language, then powerful, and it comes to the state of lifestyles. So how language is coming into this picture, just I can get more clarity. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So first, when we talk about Om Shanti, 
It is not a Hindu word. It's a state of mind. Like in French, we would say bon voyage. Bon voyage is a universal way of talking, although it's French, which simply means have a good trip. So similarly, Om Shanti, when somebody dies and we say Om Shanti, 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 that is reminder to us that the body is gone, but the soul is alive. The soul never dies. And the true state of the soul is peace. And so it's a reminder. Similarly, the Brahma Kumaris, whoever they meet, will say Om Shanti. It's a reminder. It's not a chanting. It's not a greeting. It is a reminder that I am a peaceful being. You are also a peaceful being. So it's like, you know, even if you're the biggest professional, high CEO, whatever you are, but the moment you're going to talk to a little child, a baby, you will come down to that level of the baby and you will use the language which the baby understand very softly. What is your name? Where do you come from? You do not talk. You do not talk with that professional language. So similarly, when I communicate or converse with my fellow brothers and sisters, Om Shanti simply means it's a reminder that I'm a peaceful being, you're a peaceful being, and we are communicating. Um, regarding the whole process, thoughts, I will give you a very gross example that you're in the office and you want to do something but your boss doesn't allow you to do. So at that time, you will not say anything. He's stopped you. Maybe even, even he's insulted you. You will not insult back. You will not say anything. But that thoughts will enter your mind, which you will create, that what does he mean? What does he think he is? Every time we bring a new suggestion, he just cuts us off, something like that. And then you don't say anything, but you just throw the file on the table. Or you bang something or you bang the door, that is called attitude. You do not say anything, but your state of mind is now reflected through how you present yourself. And then you'll start maybe complaining or shouting or whatever, that is language, maybe even screaming, whatever. And then it comes into action. Not everything comes into action or words, but sometimes it comes in the action and you want to fight or you want to push or you want to pull. So this is the whole process of our communication. And we need to stop some way. We can't just carry on like that because that will need to experience that peace. I hope it's clear to you now. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Pratibha. Okay, there is a question in the chat. It says, mm. as a Rotarian, how do I give peace in the midst of trouble? Are there avenues within the Rotary family worldwide and in my community to transfer the advantages of inner peace to selfless conflict resolution in the community? Hello, brother, whoever the question is from, I won't be able to answer. I won't be able to answer anything about Rotary Club because I've never worked with Rotary Club. Uh, I've not interacted so much. That you have to ask your fellow Rotarian, not me. I've just given you a general solution. We understand, sister. We understand, sister. Yeah. Thank you so much, yeah. sister Pratibha and sister Gautami. 
Okay. Yeah. We, we appreciate your valuable time. We appreciate your valuable yeah, what time. Is, what is Kitty's we'll question? We will, we will have uh, 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 another session where we'll have a bigger question answer session. Uh, if, okay. if you are ready now to uh, listen to the question from uh, Kitty and uh, Kriti. Yes. We are Sister social Kriti. animal. That is why we are Rotarian. We are selfless. That is why we are Rotarian. We really help a society at peace, but it's a bit difficult to understand each other. Everybody's intentions is very clear. It's still conflict is there. So how we love each other and how can we make harmony of peace? Sister Pratibha, me, thank you. Yes. Yeah, uh, to be very honest, we've been working with this organization and so many people and culture and language and faith. I would just give you a suggestion from my experience that try to understand yourself. When you understand yourself, you will start understanding everybody. But if we have a missing link within ourselves, we won't be able to understand others honestly. So try and understand what you need, how you need to do, what you need to do, and you will see, you know, others being understood. Put yourself there. Perfectly Thank put you. Yourself. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you so much. Okay. We appreciate it. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And thank you for the opportunity to all the fellow Rotarians and all those who are present at the Lighthouse. On behalf of Lighthouse, most welcome to you. Enjoy this peaceful space. And the environment is rich with the vibrations of this peace. So being there as well, you can absorb the vibrations of peace of the environment in this uh, uh, space of Lighthouse. Om Shanti, have a great weekend. The name implies the light, the name implies is the glory, and with her name, she is one of the like um, people who are member of the UN within some capacities. So it is not a small thing, so they are do, doing the great things with her time schedule. She has given to us. We are really grateful. Thank you to you, ma'am. Thank you all the Brahma Kumari team headquarters and also the lighthouse team here. Rotary Club of Lagos Farm who is very thankful to you for your providing this occasion and also the space. I want to thank you all the 10 Rotary Clubs there. We have Rotary Club of Bagada. Rotary Club of Bikaja South, Rotary Club of Pikaruru, Metro, Rotary Club of Misery Golden, Rotary Club of Maryland Ikeja, Rotary Club of Musini Golden, Rotary Club of Ogudu GRA, Rotary Club of Opevi, Rotary Club of Porta, and also there are so many other visiting Rotarians online and also so many Rotarians online and guests and Rotary friends. To all of you, we are really thankful. Now I'm coming to our club, our host president. Thank you, sir. Well done. We have created environment to get more peace and how to give more peace to the community. That is our objective. And with the leadership of our chairman, Iman Sutri and also Rotarian BK Prasanna Janaji who is the main man behind it and yes. outside and see the smile of our heart already. <laughs> big, big peace to all of us, giving a big peace in all of us on a Sunday morning. I'm surely thankful to all of us because everybody escaped or they have come their sleep, early morning sleep and they have come here by 8.30, attended this occasion. I'm thankful to all of us and I'm thankful that Rotary Club of Lagos County created some peace and given some peace and taught more lives 
Let's continue with our hope. We create more hopes in the whole of the world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, uh, uh for the vote of thanks. Uh, uh, I would like to invite Lieutenant Onuri Ajay Abimbola to lose the face, the toast, sorry, my apologies, to raise the toast and uh, I'll carry forward from here. Thank you. Distinguished guests, my fellow folk presidents, my fellow Rotarian and friends of Roku. Well, I congratulate you, my co president. Thank you so much. This is a nice program, and I want to have more of this by God's grace. Well, I would like to propose to Rotary yeah. <laughs> Club of Lagos and Group, Rotary yeah. Club of the Pedia South, Rotary yeah. Club of the Corridor Metro, Rotary Club of the Sherry Golden, Rotary Club of Badada. Okay. <laughs> Rotary Club of the Ogudu GRE. Rotary Club of Mission Building. That's nice. Rotary Club of Ota. Rotary Club of Upper B. Then to District 9110. Rotary Club. Rotary Club Lighthouse. Rotary Club Lighthouse. I mean, yeah, sorry for that. The Rotary Club Worldwide. Thank you so much, and thanks for coming. <laughs> Can we take the national thing? The full center. I rise, O God, I trust. Land Jesus follows me. To stand on the front of